Education Center uh, was the uh, learned the Advanced uh, Education Center, um, which uh, is about 20,000 square feet or so. And, and the architect is here, Mr. Baxter Bailey, and he's going to be giving us some details on the uh, on, on phase three. But there were three, I think, compelling reasons why phase three uh, is, is being constructed. And um, the first of those is the development of the comprehensive one-stop center. And uh, Ms. Louise Tomlinson, the local manager of the VEC, is here with us tonight to speak to the importance of the creation and development of a comprehensive one-stop center to serve this area of Virginia. Ms. Tomlinson. Thank you for allowing me to talk today. Um, David asked me to answer, I guess, basically two questions. What is a comprehensive one-stop career center? And it's also in Virginia called a Virginia Workforce Center, which um, our office is one of the comprehensive one-stop centers in Crater, Area 15. And it is a site where a wide range of employment, training, and career education programs and services are available to employees, workers, job seekers, youth, and also business services to employers. And um, when, the, when this comes into um, effect, we will be the one comprehensive one-stop center for Crater Area 15. And the law mandates that each area have one comprehensive one-stop center. So that's a good thing. Um, just to give you a little bit of information about the centers, there are various partners in the workforce centers that promote workforce services and provide business services to employers while working to improve the workforce and economic development in our communities. Employers, workers, job seekers, businesses, and industry are customers of the One Stop Center, and they can be an array of all kinds of different people with different needs, employed, unemployed, underemployed, um, employers needing the services of workers to go about their daily work. And anyone can assess the services of our centers free of charge. And there are three levels of services, and um, just to give you a little bit of information, they're called CORE, the first one, which is what most people use, and they are services that anyone and everyone has available to them, and there's no charge. So someone that comes in and needs employment services or unemployment services or needs some career information, we can provide them some information as we would anyone. If they are unable to find employment through those core services, then they can move into a, a, the, next core, the next area, which is called intensive. And sometimes when you move into the intensive services, sometimes those services are free and sometimes they are not. And then when an individual has gone through core and intensive services and are still not job ready, they can be moved into the training area. And we are one of um, the few Virginia Employment Commission offices in Virginia that operate the Workforce Investment Act program for adults and dislocated workers. And so that's where the training component comes in under us. Also in our area, the Improvement Association offers the youth program for here. And they can also uh, move their uh, youth into various training. There are a number of partners that are involved in the one-stop centers. Some of those are mandated by federal law, and some can come in because they want to be a part of the system. And the Virginia Employment Commission is mandated, and we provide the majority of the services that are mandated under the law. We provide employment services, unemployment services, unemployment insurance services, veteran services, farm placement services, trade act services, and again, I've mentioned that we operate the adult and dislocated worker programs that come under the Workforce Investment Act program. And again, we provide business services to employers. And you ask, why is the comprehensive one-stop center good for our community? It brings partners together to provide a large array of workforce services, and the partners work together to promote and provide a skilled workforce to employers, thus promoting workforce development for economic growth. And we all know that that's very important, and we need to be working toward that so that we are an area in which industry is looking um, to us to have a skilled workforce. Collectively, we provide more for everyone as we work together because some programs can provide some services and another program can pro provide other services. And so the whole um, um, purpose of that is so that we would work together 
to provide the most services available to help build our workforce in our area. And so everyone wins, both the, both the employer and the job seekers in our communities win because um, it provides more income and more industry and businesses to our area and we have a more educated workforce. And so we're looking forward to being a part of that and we hope that we'll be um, the best in the state of Virginia. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the comprehensive one-stop center is, is one reason for the development of uh, the fir third phase of the uh, Southside Virginia Education Center. The second reason uh, for the development of uh, this project is that it establishes the Longwood Center. And again, this is nothing new to the Board of Supervisors. Uh, the Longwood Center will be located in phase three. Three classrooms and faculty offices are dedicated to Longwood University. Longwood joins Murray Baldwin College in co-locating its programs with Southside Virginia Community College and will be offering classes to students wishing to earn credits towards a four-year degree. So uh, the residents of Greensville County uh, will also be able to work towards a four-year degree without having to leave the community, uh, which is, has been fairly important uh, to, to us uh, in the past. Uh, the third foundation of this vision is that uh, the, the benefits that uh, would also incur to Southside Virginia Community College. The community college will be provided with several additional classrooms. One of these classrooms will be a high performance technology lab that will improve the work score, workforce skills as they compete for jobs in industries such as Rolls-Royce. So it, it really is a good invitation for our marketing efforts and economic development to have uh, such a, uh, a lab uh, like this so that we can teach the, the more highly technical skills that one might not find otherwise. So those are the three foundations on which this project is built. Uh, Baxter Bailey and Associates has been retained to uh, prepare the floor plans and the architectural plans and has, has done so, and a, an admirable job I might, might add. Um, and I would like to call on Baxter at this time to give a, uh, a description of the architectural features of phase three and then to share with you the bid results. May I start with the bid results? Please do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a little handout on to each of the board members, and I'll. Okay. Pardon? Dave will have okay. It. okay. And we'll start with the very good news that, as opposed to our original budget, and you'll find there are, somewhere in that packet there are three pieces of paper. Uh, pink, yellow, green. Uh, the pink piece of paper is the original project budget as I, I, I provided to the county for bricks and mortar and site work of 3,451,000. When you turn to the yellow page, that was one of the bids, and the green page is the, the second low bid, but the green page is the low bid and the recommended uh, price that we're going to talk about today. Our project came in bricks and mortar and site work for three million one ninety seven, um, and roughly four hundred thousand dollars in savings. So you can compare the pink sheet, and there's a slight different arrangement because I pulled out the parking lot and the construction, uh, the sprinkler system, and and the additive alternates. But we'll talk about that in a second. But basically, we had a very good bid uh, class. Uh, we had a total of 10 bidders. Uh, the low bid was submitted. The total low bid, including base bid and additive alternates on the front sheet here. It's mark number one. It should be should have been at the top of the page, but it's, it's a type. My secretary got it wrong. But they're, they're the apparent low bid. And the difference between the low bid of 3197200 and the second low bid of three million one ninety nine is eighteen hundred dollars. So you had a very good day on bid day, a very good day, and we're just very happy for you. Uh, and that number that you're looking at includes all of the additive alternates. And when we went in, 
administration and architect were worried about several items, and we had some things that we want to talk to you about next, which are the attic alternates. So, may I go to that? Any questions? Questions? Okay. If you turn next to a little half size floor plan. I'm going to show you this is got got this this document here. You're looking at additive alternate number on this drawing, you're looking at additive alternate number one and number three. And the additive alternate uh, for number one, which is completing the sidewalk work around the loop, this joins District 19, this joins the sidewalk that comes out from uh, the health department, coming out from the administration building where we are today. And we've finished, finished these sidewalks and bring it around the crescent so there's a walk all the way around and a communication walk for all the buildings to connect. That's number one. This price was 38200 and we recommend that you take it since you're well within the budget. The second, the added bulk number three is the paving and the development of the back parking lot, which we had deferred back in phase one and two because of the construction that's going to take place here in phase three. That price is $52,000, and we recommend that you take it. Uh, the... Excuse me, I'm alone here today, so just bear with me for one second. The additive alternate number two, we skipped, we did one and three. Number two is additional lighting that finishes the street lamps all the way around the, the end of the, of the lawn here. This way, can you see that? And provides the lighting here for phase three is in the base contract, but we did not finish this lighting either because of the... Uh, uh, the, the construction to come in phase three and budget reasons on phase one and two. So this lighting would go in, this lighting would go in, as well as the lighting for, excuse me, the lighting for the <coughs> parking lot, which is was an additive alternate. The parking lot itself is in the base bid, is in the big number. The, the gravel parking lot for the... How do you explain that, Mr. Whittington? That's the... This is the 40,000 square foot parking area that is required in your contract to be down for emergency services. Now, it is needed for parking overflow anyway, but it also uh, meets that contractual obligation to be down. But it is be rock only. Rock only. Yes. Yes, because this, we hope, will be temporary. Right. And with the the planning that we was ongoing now for phases four, five, and six right. of this facility. Right. Yes, that's correct. So those are those are the those are three of the additive alternates. Additive alternate number four does not exist. We skipped the number five. Again, that had to do with the form, the bid form as it was issued originally. And the additive alternate number five is the addition of the second movable wall in the Golden Leaf Commons and the enhancement of its bulkhead. And it is $52,000. Okay. Can I assume that this new, the, the total bid and all the additive alternates that Three million one is is a good number, and we can prepare a contract. Since it's four hundred thousand dollars plus uh, below the budget amount, yes. I think it's very good news. Very good news. Well, let me make it even a little bit better. Okay. Phase three at three million one ninety nine is about a hundred and fifty nine dollars a square foot. That's less money than phase one and two per square foot. And it's based on the fact that the administration and the design team put in a lot of infrastructure in phase one and two. And so we have an easier load on water sewer extensions and all that 
and we had already built the base for the parking lot as the gravel parking lot during the short period of time. So, uh, but we had good numbers too. The bricks and mortar are more competitive today than they were in, in 2008, which is, and, and, and you could tell by the bids. The, if it's somewhere in that packet, all the bids are in, the, the, yes. yeah, you can see yeah, the range. Yes, yes, it was a good tight day. Yeah. Right. Well, some days they don't work out as well as this, and some days they do. So we have to rejoice when we get them. We rejoice this good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Staff has asked uh, the county attorney to prepare a resolution. Resolution 12-112 bid acceptance SDEC phase three project. Now. I have a bit of a disconnect, Baxter. I have a little bit different figure on Russell's memo than I have on your fig on your information. But on your information, it's three million one hundred and ninety-seven thousand two hundred dollars. That is my figure. Okay, well, we're going to go with your figure. Okay. Yes, I have a contract this. prepared too. Okay, great. A, dr a draft contract. Okay. I'm not, it's not signable, but it's right. for review. Okay. Staff has resolution 12-112 uh, uh, prepared for the board's uh, adoption, if you so please, whereas Greensville County issued invitations to bid for the construction project known as the Southside Virginia Education Center Phase 3, and whereas the, the county's invitation to bid stated that the contract would be awarded quote, on a lump sum basis for the base bid and any additive items, end quote, and whereas the county's project uh, loan was secured from rural development and its instructions to the county included the following provision, quote, the owner shall have the right to accept alternates in the sequence or combinations listed and to determine the low bidder on the basis of the sum of the base bid and the alternates accepted, end quote, and whereas the county has determined that it will award a contract for the base bid plus all four additive items, and whereas Daniel and Company submitted the low bid, uh, which included the base bid and all four additive items for $3,197,200, it is accordingly hereby resolved. The board hereby awards the contract to Daniel and Company for the base bid plus all four additive items for the sum of $3,197,200. Further resolved, the county staff uh, shall promptly provide a copy of this resolution to all vendors which submitted bids.